The finesse of jumping out of an airborne aircraft from an altitude of 1,200 feet above sea level is a reality special forces undergo for special skills. To successfully execute the airborne jump, paratroopers require animus courage with determination, especially in the face of danger. Cadets undergoing the training for the first time, it seems like madness. The four weeks basic airborne course is a military static line parachute jump training conducted at the airborne wing of the Nigerian Army School of Infantry, Jaji. A total of 162 Army and Air Force regular cadets of the 69 regular course reported to the Airborne School and 154 were successfully graduated, with eight of them being female cadets. The cadets underwent the four weeks rigorous basic airborne training to become paratroopers. As special forces in training, the course is designed to provide special forces with the capabilities to conduct airborne operations. The training embodies intensive theoretical and practical airborne training exercise. The training also provides an avenue to develop leadership qualities, self-confidence and an aggressive spirit through mental and physical conditioning conducted by highly qualified instructors. Reaching this level was a deliberate effort to restructure the training curriculum which looked at developing the individual skill of the cadets, developing their mental and physical fitness, and overall bringing out the warrior in them. In this training, cadets will go through the nine course conduct stages in the three phases of the training, physical assessment, ground training, and jump week. On week one, cadets undergo physical assessment which involves medical examination to ascertain their health status and physical fitness in line with the airborne standard. At the end of the screening, only 159 out of 163 cadets that initially joined the training were certified medically and physically fit to take part in the training. We make them go through a fitness efficiency test and the fitness efficiency test entails um, regimes on beam heaving, push-ups, sit-ups, squat thrust, and 3.2 kilometer run. And uh, these phases of exercise are to be done under timing with the required number need to be um, gotten by each volunteer for them to proceed for training proper. Next is ground training. Cadets undergo an intensive special training consisting parachute landing fall, lateral drift apparatus, mock door apparatus, swing landing trainer, suspended harness and recovery of air items. Airborne troops land at speed of about 13 miles per hour. This force is comparable to jumping from a 12 foot wall, which is why they practice the PLF from a height of roughly 3 to 4 feet to develop a safe landing technique. The stage is essentially focused on equipping the cadets with the skills to execute a PLF from a static platform, making use of the five points of contact on their bodies. The airborne training is relevant to me as a junior level commander because it has sharpened my skill sets, enhanced my individual and collective thinking and strategic understanding and also I will be able to lead men and material as effective and efficiently in combat action. Next is the lateral drift apparatus. The cadets are taught on developing the proper technique for controlling the parachute during descent. 16 cadets fill the PLF stage and 18 others could not pass the lateral drift assessment stage. To properly exceed the aircraft, Cadets must practice these actions on the mock door. 
The mock door is a ground apparatus where cadets are prepared for what's like to jump from an airborne aircraft. This includes boarding of the aircraft, seating arrangements for lift and passes, stick numbers, response to time warning. And jump command. This stage prepares the cadets for tar training. The tar training phase simulates exact actions on the aircraft. Cadets are trained on proper technique to hand over the static line to the jump master and take a good door position to individually exit from the aircraft on the order of the jump master. Cadets will need to face their fear of heights, as failure to pass this stage automatically disqualifies a cadet. Cadets are evaluated by an instructor who critiques them until they have developed an exit worthy of a life jump from an airborne aircraft. Malfunctions drills are also taught and practiced on the tour, and all activities are graded from the moment it is introduced. 11 cadets could not pass the tar jump assessment stage. Going forward to jump week, cadets are also trained on suspension in the air after the deployment of their parachutes. Drills in this regard are conducted to prepare the cadets for emergency landing before they make contact with the ground. This is known as suspended harness. The knowledge and experiences gained on the PLF and LDA is put to practice on swing landing trainer. Cadets must qualify the stage before the jump week. Recovery of air items, an instructional and practical period on how jumpers would recover items used during the jump and how to avoid drag that could be caused by wind after landing. As ground training comes to an end, the successful cadets that completed all the stages in the training will put to practice everything they have learned in this reality phase. To graduate as paratroopers, cadets must complete five different jumps consisting three Hollywood, one combat and one night jump. As preparations for the jump week begins, the overall jump master of the day briefs all cadets participating in the operation and revises all aspects of the jump during the marshalling control officer briefing, known as MACO briefing. During the brief, a demonstrator will revise every action the jump master is mentioning. Cadets lined up on the departure airfield after picking their parachutes which was meticulously parked and inspected by Riggers. If any deficiency is found in a parachute, it is immediately removed from circulation. Cadets participating in the airborne operation will assemble and immediately don up their parachutes, after which the jump master personnel inspection, GMPI, begins. Jump, jump. Move forward. This inspection is safety checks conducted by qualified jump masters to cross-check the fully kitted jumper before boarding the aircraft. Having gone through the tedious training preparing the cadets with the skills to perform airborne jump, the cadets are optimistic that they have been well equipped to face the next challenge. The airborne training has helped in exposing me to contemporary special forces operations in modern day warfare. The skills acquired during the training cannot be overemphasized as is tailored towards special forces reaction to complex emergency. After the inspection, the overall jump master wait to be signaled by the pilot. This delay is often caused by air traffic control and weather situations. In order not to deter their morale, the cadets get entertained as they wait while on the ground and on board aircraft by the jump masters to help keep them focused on the task ahead.
Finally, cadets receive signal to board the aircraft. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. As cadets make way to board the aircraft, we caught up with the deputy commandant of the Nigeria Defense Academy. The current operational environment demands physically and mentally fit uh, officers. And that is why we had to redesign, go back to the drawing board, we had to redesign the whole of the training curriculum to see that it reflects the current happenings in the operational environment. This gave us the push we needed to raise our physical fitness level to the standard required to end the airborne wing. Cadets will be flown in the C-130 Hercules to the drop zone. The aircraft flies from the Nigerian Air Force Base Kaduna to the Nigerian Army School of Infantry, Drop Zone, Jaji. Cadets are allotted 20 minutes before the drop zone. Before they jump, the jump masters assess the wind condition when the doors are opened. The cadets hook their static line to the anchor line cable. This connection will open the chute upon jumping. Moment of truth sets in. The jump masters announces it's one minute to the drop zone. Cadets make their practical jump of the three Hollywood jumps before the night jump. After a successful jump, the joy of an accomplishment is so vivid on their faces as they make the jump and land it on the drop zone. This way, was it what you expected? It was more than... After training, yes. everything comes at ease. Uh -huh. so that's the best that's the thing I've ever seen. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Do one jump, eh, one, do two jump, eh, one, do three jump, eh, one, do this thing. But accidents can occur. Keeping the feet and knees together is an essential part of the jumping phase. In order to land successfully without twisting the legs, which can result in a major fatality. Not more than two cadets sustained major injuries during the jump and were evacuated for medical attention, while five others sustained mild injuries on their feet. On graduation day, cadets make a final jump display for the special guest of honor, the Commander Infantry Corps of the Nigerian Army, as friends and families gathered to witness the progress made during the four weeks training. We have the confidence now that we can land safely due to the training we have achieved so far. So, matter the night now, I can meet my chest that. Every fifth time of Nigeria Defense Academy, we're able to jump and land safe. I've not seen five points of contact. Uh, 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 Expressing his satisfaction with the level of performance displayed by the graduating cadets, the special guest of honor commended the cadets for their expressiveness in the training. On the course of your training, you were subjected to a four weeks rigorous airborne fitness efficiency training and the phases of airborne operations. I know that the training is top notch 
and I can clearly see that you are beaming with the confidence and disposition of proud members of the Ebon family. I am particularly glad to note with satisfaction the high standard maintained throughout your training. This is a clear indication of commitment and dedication to continuous military training. I want to congratulate and salute your guts for successfully completing the basic urban course. Every coach or teacher has a certain pride reserved for their students. Um, I'm particularly impressed by this set of cadets. They are very young, sharp, with strong spines and ankles. They have been keeping up with our training standards and um, of particular note are the female among them. They were able to break the barrier and do that which um, most female, female personnel will not do easily. I would say this particular set of uh, cadets have given us the absolute best. The, their mentality have to be shaped to understand that the security challenges in the country needed another form of approach in which they have to react to the new curriculum the academy has structured and I'm glad to tell you that uh, the cadets are really responding to training and as we have now we have uh, warriors ready to be shipped out of the academy to meet the challenges of the country. The academy's leadership has made it a priority to equip its officer cadets with the right mindset as future officers of the prestigious Nigerian Armed Forces. Being regarded as one of the finest military academies in Africa, it is an undisputable fact that the Nigeria Defense Academy has earned its name as an institution of great potentials.